The Dynaco Control Box, Components and Wiring. Welcome to the Dynaco Control Box video. As you may know, with a few minor exceptions, this control box is now universal on all Dynaco doors. So what you see here applies to all installations you will make going forward. And where there is an exception, you'll find it in a special section so marked. Okay, let's run through this thing, starting with the box itself. As you can see, there are a number of external features and labels that we must be able to point out to our customers. Let's begin with the emergency stop or e-stop control. The e-stop, when depressed, will instantly stop the door movement either up or down. By turning the e-stop knob to the right, it will release the e-stop and get you back into operational mode. Next, we move to the open-close button. As the label says, it's used to open or close the door depending upon its position by depressing it once. Labels may seem a little obscure, but they are required by UL, NEC, and NFPA regulations and represent important warnings or information for all operators and installers of the Dynaco high performance door. Here we see the electrical danger label indicating high voltage. In this case, 460 volts. Just below is the danger label warning anyone working on the equipment to lock out the electricity before performing work on the door. Sounds simple, but high voltage can seriously injure or kill someone. Always follow proper lockout tagout procedures. Moving to the top of the control box, you'll find another extremely important label. This one tells the installer that if conduit is installed anywhere but from the bottom of the box, the warranty will be voided. The reason for this is that condensation from the conduit and metal filings from drilling, if done from the top or sides, can infiltrate the components of the box and cause any number of problems, especially shorting out the sensitive and electrically driven elements. So, needless to say, Always install conduit, both high and low voltage, only from the bottom of the control box, never from the top or sides. We now move over to the lockable rotary disconnect handle. This lockable handle, of which our previous label warned, allows us to turn off and lock out the power so maintenance or repairs can be performed on the door. Notice that it can be locked out using a pull-out tab to ensure the power stays off while maintenance is performed. As you will see, when the handle is in the horizontal position, pointing to the green off sign, the power is off. Rotating the handle clockwise to the red position will return power to the box. To open the box when the power is off, first undo the three latches on the right side of the box. Now, while the handle is in the off position, move the lever at the top of the disconnect handle to the right and pull the door open. Now that we have the door open to the box with the power off, let's take a look at the inside. Again, there are labels we must be aware of and, of course, all the internal components. Let's start with the upper left corner of the door and the UL listing and ID number. These confirm the UL regulation of the control box. Next, we move to the door controller label that tells us how to set the limits, timers, and other functions of the Dynalogix 2 controller. It's really a step-by-step -step instruction set to aid customers and technicians with basic controller functions. Moving down to the vendor identification sticker, we find voltage, amp draw, NEMA rating, and door serial number of the door and the control box. Next, you see the photocell amplifier sticker. It describes the standard install and setup procedure for the photocell amplifier. Also, it provides a description of the LED indicator operation. While it is preset at the factory, you may need to adjust it slightly in the field, and this label gives you all you need to know. The Dynaco control box components, and wiring. We will now quickly review all the key components contained in the control box and then proceed to actual wiring. For the purposes of this video, we have removed the components from the box to give you a better view of the actual elements and wiring of each, plus the programming of the controller. 
Let's start with a quick tour of the control panel. We begin with the main rotary disconnect to which the main power is connected, along with the ground block you see in the upper right. This unit also contains the fuses for the main power, as you see in red. Next is the step-down transformer, which steps down your primary voltage to your secondary voltage, which is always 24 volts AC. This powers all the low voltage components, like the photo eyes, Dynalogix 2 controller, the motion sensors, push buttons, loop detector, wireless transmitter, and so forth. Anything that requires low voltage. Moving down, we see the Dynalogix 2 controller, the brains behind the brawn. This is where you set your door limits, automatic close timers, run timers, read your LED indicators for troubleshooting, and enter the various menus via the display. The display will also give you vital door statistics, like number of cycles. And last, at the bottom right, is where you connect your encoder, which we will cover in a second. Next is the photo cell amplifier. It's used to adjust the settings for the photo eyes, although it is normally preset at the factory. The unit offers a number of adjustable capabilities if you need them. Here you see the receiver for the wireless edge and transmitter located in the bottom of the door. If the door comes in contact with anyone or anything, this receiver takes that signal from the transmitter and automatically stops and reverses the door. Moving along, we are now looking at the terminal strip where all connections from the door, both high voltage motor wires and low voltage wires are made. This includes the motor and all sensors and options. All connections will be made on the left side, and each terminal is marked so that you can match the right wires to the right terminals. Just above the terminal strip is the variable frequency drive for the motor. It regulates the motor, protects it, and offers a screen for diagnostics and adjustments. However, they all come preset from the factory for the specific door, so any further adjustments should not be made without a Dynaco qualified technical representative. So that is a quick review of the components inside your Dynaco control box. Now let's get to wiring. Wiring the Dynaco control box. Okay, wiring it is. We begin by bringing the main power into the box from the bottom and proceed to wire the ground and high voltage to the main rotary disconnect. Be sure, as always, to have the power shut off at the main service box and breakers switched to the off position. The first thing we do is remove the clear plastic finger guard and then attach the ground wire into the ground block on the upper right. Then, depending upon whether you are single or three phase, you will proceed to attach the high voltage wires to the terminals marked as L1, L2, and L3. Since this is a single phase install, we will attach our two leads to the L1 and L2 terminals and lock in tight. Then reinstall the finger guard clear plastic case and screw down tightly. This is to make sure no one gets shocked when the power is on. Next we move down to the Dynalogix 2 controller. On the lower right you will find the encoder connector. Remove it from the panel and proceed to wire the connector matching the color sequence on the controller. From left to right it's shield, white, black, red, and green. Once wired, reinstall the connector into the panel and you're ready to move to the next step. Now let's move to the terminal strip where we will proceed to wire the high and low voltage components from the Dynaco door. As we said earlier, most doors will have the same set of wiring procedures, but there are a few exceptions. These exceptions will be shown to you as separate chapters in this video and are quick and easy. So let's begin with the high voltage wiring of the motor wires. Here you see the motor wires as they should look prior to insertion into the terminal strip. From left to right, they are the shield wire, the ground wire, and three motor wires. Each has a specific terminal assigned to it. First, the shield wire goes into one of the green ground terminals. Next, the green ground wire is also connected to a green ground terminal. Then your black motor leads go into terminals marked T1, T2, and T3. 
Okay, now to the low voltage wiring. The first one we are attaching is the gray covered transmitter cable for the photo eyes. There is a white and a shield wire inside the cable. The white goes into the terminal numbered 41 and the shield into 42. Be sure to strip both wires so there is as little excess wire exposed as possible. Next we move to the black colored photo eye receiver cable. It contains two wires, a shield wire and a white wire. The white goes into terminal 43 and the shield into terminal 44. Again, make sure there is as little excess wire exposed as possible. The anti-roll switch for the slimline door. As we mentioned, there are a few exceptions to the wiring of the universal Dynaco control box, and one of them is the slimline door and wiring its anti-roll switch. There are two wires. The first black wire goes into any of the terminals marked with the number 1, and the second red wire goes into terminal number 4. Again, this is an exception for the slimline door and wiring the anti-roll switch. Unique wiring for the streamline door, the anti-roll switch, and brake connections. As we mentioned, there are a few exceptions to the wiring of the universal Dynaco control box, and one of them is the streamline door and wiring its anti-roll switch. There are two wires. The first black wire goes into any of the terminals marked with the number 1, and the second red wire goes into terminal number 4. Again, this is an exception for the streamline door and wiring the anti-roll switch. Another exception for the streamline is wiring the brake connections. Here, as you see, we are connecting the low voltage black wire into terminal B1 and the red wire into terminal B2. Unique wiring for the armor door, the photo eyes, brake and voltage, and cable brake over travel switch. There are three unique wiring operations that are required for the armor door. The first is the wiring of the photo eyes, the second the brake, and finally the cable brake over travel switches. Let's begin with the wiring for the photo eyes. Step one is to take the red wires from the transmitter and from the receiver and gang them together. Then terminate them into number one in the terminal strip. Then do the same with the green wire from the transmitter and receiver and gang them together, terminating that set into X2 in the terminal strip. The receiver also has a white wire and a black wire. The white wire goes into number one in the terminal strip as you see here, and the black goes into number five on the terminal strip. And that's it for the photo eyes for the armor door. Next, we will terminate the brake. Wiring the brake for the armor door. Another exception for the armor door is wiring the brake connections. Here, as you see, we are connecting the low voltage red wire into terminal B1 and the black wire into terminal B2. Then you must terminate the high voltage wiring for the brake. This is done by inserting the white wire into terminal B3 and the black voltage wire into terminal B4. Finally, we will wire the cable brake over travel switch. Taking the red wire, simply terminate into slot 1 and the black wire into 1B. Wiring the loop detector activation, all Dynaco doors. If your install requires a loop, this is how to wire that. First, locate the braided or twisted red leads. Keeping them braided all the way to the terminal strip, insert one lead into slot 33 and the other into slot 34. Note that the loop detector is pre-wired when ordered and is self-adjusting. That's it. Wiring the remote push button or pull cord activation, all Dynaco doors. If your Dynaco door requires either a remote push button or pull cord activation, the following is the wiring procedure. Locate the two activation wires, in this case red, and insert one wire into slot number one and the other into slot number two. Wiring the Falcon motion sensor, all Dynaco doors. When you are installing a Falcon motion sensor for your door, the following are the wiring procedures. 
Locate the Falcon leads. The white lead and the red lead go into slots numbered 1. The black lead goes into the slot X2 on the terminal strip, and the green wire goes into slot number 3. The yellow wire is not used and can be cut back or taped back. Setting the Dynalogix 2 controller and related operations. All Dynaco doors. We now move into the Dynalogix 2 controller and other components that must be set for your door to operate perfectly. Step one is to set the three door limits. Close, photo eye disable, and open position. To do this, power up the control box. You will see the Dynalogix 2 menu display flash set limits upon initial startup. Your first move is to press and hold the two program buttons until the display says limit set. Then press enter and close limit will appear on the display. Then hit enter one more time and the jog to close mode will be displayed. Now you can jog the door down to the close position. You do this by pressing the jog down button until you achieve the desired closed position and press enter to save it. The display confirms that the close limit is set and signals with a large OK. Our next limit is the photo eye limit setting. To get to that menu item, press the top program button once and the word photo limit will appear. Press enter to get into the program. Then hit the jog up reset button and bring the door to approximately 1 to 2 inches above the photo eyes. Once done, press Enter, and the display will confirm with Photo Limit Set OK. Now we move to Set the Open Limit. We do that by pressing the Upper Program button two times to get to the display that says Open Limit. Then press Enter, and you will see the words Jog to Open Enter. Press the Jog Up button until the door reaches the specific door model open limit position. Press Enter to save the upper limit for the door. The display will confirm with the words Open Limit Set OK. With your three limit positions set and saved, now press the Menu button two times and you are back to the ready display. The number you see will always be the number of door cycles that have occurred. Syncing the WDD. We then move to syncing the WDD or wireless bottom edge sensor. The first thing you must do is to synchronize the bottom edge sensor with the receiver. You accomplish this by using a small screwdriver, pushing in on the black button located below the red LED. Once you see the lower green LED blink, you know you are synced up. Now test the door with your partner by contact with the bottom edge, and if you hear a click, and see the green LED light up, you know it's working. The photo eye amplifier. Next, we move to the photo eyes. Locate the amplifier and note that when all is working, all four LEDs are lit, two green and two amber. If, however, the eyes are not seeing one another, the two amber LEDs will go out. This means that either someone is in the way of the beam or your photo eyes are not aligned properly. If they are aligned correctly, test the operation by blocking the beam with your hand and make sure the two amber LEDs go out. Once done, the photo eyes are properly set. Next, we move to setting the door run timers. These are the safety timers that, while the door opens or closes, will stop the door from moving if time expires. These settings prevent the door from continuously running if there is a loss of limits scenario. Thus, if the door takes five seconds to open or close, you set these timers for about two to three seconds more as a safety mechanism. The first step is to press the Open Run Timer button, and you will see it is set to 10 seconds. For the first time, you will want to press the upper or lower program button to increase or decrease the value, depending upon door travel. No need to press a Save button, it saves automatically. Then repeat the procedure, this time pressing the Close Run Timer button once, and set it to the desired value also. It will also save itself. Once the limits and safeties are all operational, 
you can now run your door. But before you do that, it's always a good idea to jog the door manually to the closed and open positions to make sure that the limits are set correctly and to avoid any damage to the door. You can do this by simply pressing the Jog Up Reset button to test for the open limit and the Jog Down Reset to test for the closed limit door position. If both settings are good, you can now run the door full speed with the push button and fine tune the run timers. Now, if your customer wants the door to close automatically after it reaches the open limit, the Dynalogix controller offers two auto close timer options. The first is the MCPB timer. This timer is capable of being turned on or off. When you press the MCPB timer button, the display will change to MC delay timer equals 0.0, .0 which means the timer is off. By pressing the upper program button, you can change the value to between 1 and 99 seconds. By setting a value, you now have turned on the timer, so any activations you have wired into Terminal 2 will now close automatically. The second timer is the AC loop timer. This one is always active, so no matter if you have set it on 0 or 99 seconds, it will always time down the activations wired into Terminal 3. Like all of our timers, they automatically save the value upon returning to the ready screen. To check the timers, run the door and the display will show the full operation as it cycles for open, auto-close countdown, and then close. Remember, it is important to know that anything wired into slot 3 on the terminal strip will work through the AC loop timer, and anything wired into slot 2 on the terminal strip will work with the MCPB timer. Obviously, setting these auto-close timers requires input from the customer as to how long they require the door to stay open for their traffic or environmental needs. Menu and Password The next set of functions revolve around re-entering the Dynalogix 2 controller after you have set up the door and all is working well. The reasons for re-entering the menu are many, but amongst the most common are resetting limits, delay times, troubleshooting, and fixing any problems that might come up. To re-enter the controller, begin by pressing and holding the two program buttons. The display will ask for a password, which is 562 on all Dynaco doors. Press Enter, and you are into the main menu. The main menu starts with Limit Set, but you can progress through the menu by pressing the upper program button multiple times. For instance, after Limit Set appears Outputs, then In Logic, and back to Limit Set. If you wish to enter any of the three, simply press Enter and work through each option by hitting the upper program button until you reach your target. Pressing the menu button will take you back to the ready screen and the current cycle count. Finally, let's briefly review what the various LEDs do as the door moves through its paces. We begin with the open and close functions. As you can see, when the door is opening, the up LED will illuminate, and when closing, the down LED will illuminate. Moving down the row of LEDs, we can tell what is happening with the door depending upon how it is set up or if there are any problems. The top LED, which corresponds to anything wired into slot number 2, will light up when activated, such as the pull cord or push button. The same is the case for the LED marked number 3, such as a motion detector or loop. If the door is closing and something interrupts the photo eye, you will see the LED marked number 5 light up, indicating the door has stopped its downward direction and reversed back to open. If the door is closing and the bottom edge detector is activated, you will see the LED numbered 4 light up, indicating the door is reversing and going up. Finally, if someone pushes the e-stop, the door will immediately cease motion, and the LED marked number 9, e-stop slash reset, will light up. Next, you will see the LEDs for the outputs. These light up to reflect what setting is being used in the output menu as the door opens and closes. And you can change the output settings based on using the menu. The output defaults are as follows. Output 1 is set to alarm, 
output 2 is set to open, and output 3 is set to close. Congratulations! You have successfully completed the Dynaco Control Box program. Dynaco High Performance Doors. Copyright 2009.